How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now today I want to install this Mr. Cool 18,000 BTU or 1.5 ton mini split system in this detached unfinished garage. Now this project is very approachable by most homeowners and you can save a ton of money doing yourself and Mr. Cool is one of the best in the business with making this process as easy as possible. So I'm going to jump in and start to mount this air handler and walk you through the complete process but also point out the three main things that DIYers get wrong and that can extend out this project or cause you to have to call on the professionals to get it up and running. So let's jump into it. So the mounting bracket is actually located on the air handler. Just remove one screw and then you can remove it from the air handler so we can mount it to the wall. But first we'll use the actual template that comes with it to position exactly where we want this unit. It'll give you the overall outline of the air handler and also all the mounting screw locations in addition to the three and a half inch hole that we need to cut through our wall. So I'll mark the middle of that hole right now and then I'll punch through from the inside with a pilot bit and then go from the outside and then drill through with the three and a half inch hole saw that's provided by Mr. Cool. This is gonna work for your vinyl siding, your sheathing on the exterior of a house. Now, if you have a masonry house, you're gonna to have to get a different hole saw. Then we'll go ahead and sink this first screw. I'm gonna use GRK two and a half inch general purpose screws with the torque bit. A cross reference making sure that everything is level prior to sinking my second screw. It does look good. Nice thing is on a few of these holes are going to give you slots so you can make that small adjustment prior to sinking in the screws. And then for me, I'm gonna go ahead and mount two more. So I'll have four total screws to hold the mounting plate in place. So now we'll start to prep for running our lines through our cutout. First up, we have our power. The power is gonna go out to our condenser and then we're gonna feed 240 volt power to that condenser and then power will feed through that into our air handlers. And then just know Mr. Cool does provide a sleeve so if you had a finished wall on the inside, you'd pass this through, and then that's just gonna give you a nice clean lined hole through your wall from the finished interior surface to your exterior surface. So if you need that, go ahead and install it now. I'm just gonna pass these lines through without the sleeve. So we'll pass the power cord out, just letting it dangle out on the outside, and then we'll route everything here in a minute. And then we'll bend the two refrigerant lines to a 90 degree angle and there'll be an additional drain line. Now this is kind of where the first mistake can come in. And that's once we get this passed through, so take your time and get those refrigerant lines. It's usually a one person job, but you might need help. The drain line needs to be on the bottom here. And we'll tape that up on the outside, making sure that stays consistent. And also once your unit is fully mounted, it needs to be level. There is a drain pan for condensation in the bottom. If it is not level like this, it could cause issues and lead to water damage in your home. And then we'll move to the outside. We'll have the little trim piece here. We'll work over all of our lines. And then we'll bend those two refrigerant lines, being careful not to kink them. And then also that white drain line needs to be on the bottom. You do wanna take a closer look inside your hole and just make sure there's no other bends or anything in that drain line. We want a nice continuous flow and keeping it on the bottom. Once we have that confirmed, we'll just take some electrical tape and a few wraps here to keep everything together and where we want it as we connect up our 15 foot pre-charge lines. Now, if the first mistake was not properly draining that air handler unit, making sure it's level, and then also that drain line has no kinks, so it's coming out on the bottom of the package under the refrigerant lines, mistake number two is just thinking through how you're gonna set your outdoor unit, the condenser itself. Now, if you pour a concrete pad, that's probably your best option. That's gonna be the best foundation for that to sit on. It should last for years and years and years. They make composite pads that you can purchase and just kind of set on the ground. I don't like that option. That's not a great 
foundation or footing for that to sit on and it will kind of lean over time. Your third option is to plan a little bit ahead and order yourself a bracket here that we can actually attach securely to our wall and then from that bracket we'll have two arms here that the actual unit will sit on. That's what I'm going to go with but usually you will need to order that in advance. And if you wanna see the exact one that I got, which is pretty nice, you can see a link in the description right below this video that will take you over to Amazon for this exact unit. The only thing that I would say is I will add an additional link if I can find one that's over 32 inches long. This one's just at 30 inches long. So you have to think through a little bit more on how are you gonna attach four lag bolts to secure this railing. Because usually our studs are placed 16 inches on center, so that would give us 32 inches, which means this is just a little bit too short. So I had to actually put a few blocks in the wall, and then that's what's gonna give me a secure backing to actually sink these lag screws. Then once you get the actual rail tightened up, the two brackets should just slide right on and then you'll be able to adjust them left to right to match up with the feet of the outdoor unit. And then trying to work a little bit smarter, not harder, I used a dolly and two ratchet straps to secure the condenser to the dolly an inch higher than the actual bracket itself. So then I was able just to put that right into place, take the two ratchet straps off, and then we have the condenser on our bracket. Now don't forget, you will put pads under each one of your four attachment points for the condenser. This will help reduce the vibration that's going back through the bracket and will also help with the, the mounting hardware to make sure that the nuts don't loosen up over time. Now I did use stainless steel hardware here, 3 8 of an inch by one and a half inch bolts with two watchers, one on top, one on bottom, and then a nylon nut to make sure that nut's not gonna loosen up over time. And here's what it looks like once it's fully secured down, squashing down each of those pads on the four different corners. Okay, so now we're gonna connect up the pre-charged line set. Again, this is critical in terms of how this is DIY because we already have the refrigerant pre-charged in these lines. So what that also makes critical is that we have these connections, these two refrigerant lines, which we're stretching out the line now. I'll first connect it here and then behind the cover here on the side closest to you guys on the condenser unit uh, are the other two connections. So we'll connect those up just using two crescent wrenches Preferably, you would have a torque wrench. A lot of us would not have that. Do not over tighten uh, because we would not want to cause damage at this step. Or again, we're gonna have to call in the professionals and they're gonna have to come out and make up some custom lines and charge those lines, right? These pre-charged lines are not gonna work if we do any damage or let out the refrigerant that's in these lines. But there are a few ways that I'll show you to check your work to make sure once we start to turn this on and commission it, that everything's working correctly and we don't have a slow leak. So you really wanna take your time, take all the caps off and then hand tighten the threads. Starting off the threads is one of the common areas where you might cross thread it and come into issues. Once you kind of hand tighten that down, then you'll take your two crescent wrenches. You're not only using one, on the swivel portion, you want to hold that upper line portion while you tighten the lower portion. So then we'll take the cover off here on the other end, and this is the end once we connect it up and open these valves, we should hear a little bit of pressure coming out of the lines into the unit itself, and that is a good sign uh, because it shows that we actually had refrigerant pressure in these lines and we were relieving them. So take your time, remember we don't wanna bend these too sharp and also think through where do you want that extra line? I'm going to leave it in a coil and kind of secure it against the bracket, trying not to get too much behind the condenser unit and leave that open as you should have about six inches of open space behind that unit as called out from the specifications. So again, use both of your crescents, then we'll take off the caps once it's all tightened and open it up. 
kind of hear it there where it pressurized on the one side and the second side. And then once you're all the way open on those valves, all the way out, you'll go ahead and replace your caps, tighten those up, and now our refrigerant lines are all done. Now before moving on to the electrical portion, I'm just going to clean all of this up and get our routing completed. First up, the kit does come with two of these wraps, one for each of your refrigerant lines, and they should go right around your connections here, which will help reduce any chattering or anything from vibration. So you just wrap those up. and kind of sculpt them around each of the fittings. So just place the second wrap on our fitting. And then once I have these in place, then I'll kind of start cleaning everything up. The Mr. Cool kit does come with this white wrap. You want to wrap it from the bottom to the top. That makes sure it's overlapping correctly. So if moisture gets in there, it kind of sheds off instead of getting under the wrap. And then I'm just gonna connect that at the top with some electrical tape. Uh, since this wrap is not adhesive. Now once I have that, I'm gonna get my routing all correct, and now I'm putting the little protective channel. It also really cleans up your routing. Now there's all sorts of different channels here. They come in four foot kits. It has a starting bell like this, and then it has unions, 90s, and then even an end piece that kind of reduces down. So it's gonna be different for each one of our installs. Really right here, I'm just putting in a four foot section and putting that section between the top portion and the bottom portion. Once you have the under channel connected up and screwed onto your siding or onto your brick, that's when you can start to put the top session and the cover on and those long four foot sections just clip into place without any screws. And then for me, this is the last component with just two screws to secure it. Here's what it looks like all cleaned up. I could go a little lower with mine, uh, but overall it looks pretty good. All right, so now it's time for electrical. We have two different connections to make. We'll go ahead and bring the harness that's going to our air handler up into the unit, wire that appropriately. And then we need to install a disconnect out here on the exterior of the building. Now, if you're connecting up your 240 volts to this unit, 20 amp, that is what this 18,000 BTU unit needs. It needs 20 amps at 240 volts. If you have an exterior panel right at your meter base and it's within sight of this unit, you don't need a disconnect. But since my panel, sub panel's inside, I need a service disconnect. So it'd be easy to pull this out, cut the power to this unit and then service it without having to have access to the breaker panel. And then from that service disconnect, I'll just use a whip here coming out the side and then that will bring us our 240 going into the unit. Once we have all that wired up, we'll connect that up with a 12-2 Romex, 12 gauge two conductor Romex that's going to the sub panel, land those conductors at the sub panel and then we'll go ahead and test out the unit. So I'm gonna drill an inch and a half hole here with the spade bit. That's gonna allow me to pass the 12-2 Romex out to this watertight connector in the back of the disconnect. I'll tighten that up and also put down some duct seal and that'll seal off that hole, making sure we don't get moisture or any insects coming in. Then I'll go ahead and level up the disconnect box and secure it with some screws into the siding and sheathing. Strip off our two conductors. These are hot conductors. We do have a black and a white. That is why we need to use that red electrical tape there. So we can go ahead and mark those both as hot conductors, not a hot and a neutral, which white usually is. I'll go ahead and connect those into the line side and also connect up my ground to the small ground bus bar there. And then connect the liquid tight 90 degree elbow tightening that up and then landing the ground and then also our two conductors. I'll stay consistent. Reds will go on the right hand side and then blacks will go on the left hand side. Now going up to the unit, I'll take off the cover. There looks to be a little bit of a wire retention device. That's new to the Mr. Cools I've installed in the past. We'll take the wire harness coming from the air handler on the inside take all the covers off of the connectors. And then the nice thing is here, they're all labeled. So it is one, two, and three. 
easy as that, connecting everything up. Mr. Cool does a really good job with making this as easy as possible of an installation. Now I took my liquid type, I connected that through, and now I have my two hot conductors and my ground coming in to our screw terminals. I'll try this retention device. I haven't tried it before, but it might help get that cover on because sometimes those covers can be a little tough to get on and sink in the three mounting screws. Here is what the finished product looks like. We could shorten up some of our different wire harnesses and such, but for a DIY kit, overall, it looks pretty good. So I ran my 12-2 Romex under this shelf here over to a 60 amp sub panel. Now this detached garage is a little different. I'm actually powering this whole garage and I'll be powering this Mr. Cool off of two EcoFlow Delta Pros. These are portable power stations. They're batteries, inverters, and a few other components kind of all in one package. Two of these together can give me 240 volts at 30 amps and power the 60 amp sub panel. So that's what I'm doing. And I'm just testing a bunch of things out. If you're interested more in those details, I'll point you in the right direction here in one minute after we test out the Mr. Cool. But with these units, the cool thing is I can actually test right away how much power draw we're taking to power this Mr. Cool. So I landed everything in the sub panel. You can see the 12-2 coming in. Again, since we had a black and white conductor, use your red electrical tape. I didn't do that in my last Mr. Cool install video, which was a duct system. And a lot of guys pointed out, and rightfully so, you should be identifying that to help people in the future so they know that is not a neutral line, that is your other hot conductor. So we're ready to flip the 20 amp breaker, which will feed this entire system. It's about 45 degrees Fahrenheit outside, so we'll see if we can't get some heat running. Okay, so we'll just use our remote here, turn it on, and then from mode, it's cool, dry, heat. I wanna set it to heat. I wanna crank things up to see what it can produce. And then I'm gonna give it a few minutes, I'm gonna measure the temperature coming out, but at least we have power. So I've been running for about 10 minutes and everything looks great. It took four to five minutes for the unit to go through its full startup cycle and get going. And now set at 80 degrees Fahrenheit for inside. It's about 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It's pulling 1700 watts. That is powering the outdoor condenser and also your indoor air handler. That is what it's actually consuming. And then I used a FLIR thermal imaging camera to see what the temperature was of the air coming out. And what I found is around 85, 86, 87 degrees Fahrenheit is what the unit's putting out with plenty of airflow, actually pretty impressive. And the overall sound, that air handler unit is actually quieter than those EcoFlow Delta Pros, the cooling fans that are trying to cool the batteries as they deliver that power. Now, whether you use the controller like I am, which I'm going to position it across the room so the thermostat in here serves to actually control the temperature of this garage, or if you want connectivity, don't forget to install the USB dongle under that front cover. That's gonna allow you to use the Mr. Cool app and have a ton of great features. Let me know what you guys think. Overall, you're looking at about a $2,000 unit. I will put a link right below the video in the description and also pin a comment. If you also have experience, let me know in the comments, good or bad, what is your experience with Mr. Cool? Because that helps me, but also helps everybody else that's considering this project. Now, if you wanna see a whole lot more about how I'm powering this garage off-grid, check out this video right here. It'll take you to the video that's on our other channel called Everyday Solar, which this is the type of thing we do over there and it's been a lot of fun starting up that channel. So thanks for joining me on this one and we'll catch you over on that next video. Take care.